agency and from my conversations that I've had with other folks, it sounds like most of you are kind of embedded in your companies. So different perspective a little bit. Um, I've worked for the same agency for about 13 to 14 years, which is actually kind of a long time as well. But I'm still relatively new to email marketing. Uh, my agency does all sorts of things from fancy slideshow decks to um, electronic books, flyers, video, you name it, we've done it, right? So I got into the email space about two years ago with a client. I'm sorry, my notes aren't showing up, so I might ramble a little bit. Um, our email client is at Microsoft, but it's a specific audience at Microsoft. It is in the education space, we do relationship marketing. So what does that mean? We send newsletters and nurture series to our, our subscribers. We don't sell products. So that's a little bit different than a lot of people think about. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is some of the challenges that we have faced and how we deal with them. All right, so a little bit of background talking about our audience. I have to throw some gifts in because everyone's been using such fun gifts. I'm like for the friends effect here today. So hopefully we've got some friends, fans, either new or old out in the audience. Um, our audience is teachers, educators, and IT folks who work in the education space. So with education, there's a little bit more concern about privacy and that sort of thing. So what we found is that one of our constraints is that we don't get a lot of information about them. We actually get more subscribers by asking for less information. So we have country, and we have their email, and we have the fact that they want to hear from us, right? So then, we come across situations where in the last about was a few months ago, um, we have this big product launch coming, we have this big event coming, does not happen often in this space. They wanted to do a big push out for it and really dive deep and use our subscriber base. Well, how do you do that if we can't segment, right? So we came up with a plan and we are on Salesforce. I know some folks aren't a fan of Salesforce. <laughs> But that is our, our ESP that we use. So we created a click-based journey to segment our audience. Um, we kind of follow the dotted lines here. But long story short, if they engaged with our first emails, we continued engaging with them, and we didn't spam people that weren't engaged. We know educators are busy. We know that they have a lot of very busy schedules. They have a lot to do. So if they weren't interested in our event, we did not want to keep pestering them. So this ended up kind of a couple of different things happened. We saw the folks that did click in our journeys were super duper engaged. And again, apologies for, for some reason my speaker notes aren't showing up, but um, I believe that the engagement on the clicked versus not clicked journeys were something like 17% CTRs versus only 3% CTRs for the non-clicked versions. So we saw huge engagement with these folks. Um, couldn't be an email conference without showing off some of the pretty emails as well. Not good after accessibility talk about continuing gifts and while doing something going. Don't pay attention to that. But we had some fun countdown timers. We had a whole series of emails. It was a really fun campaign to do. But what we really were proud of in this moment is that we were able to take our large, large audience and really narrow them down to the folks that were interested in what we had to say. And it was so successful that we are continuing to replicate this on additional campaigns. So, to kind of wrap it up in a quick bubble here for you, um, I found this quote that creativity is what happens when a mind encounters an obstacle. So, bring it all back full circle, I made this resolution, number one, that I was going to get out of my bubble and I was going to get over my obstacles of a closed bridge and a pandemic and remote work and go and talk to people, right? Here I am. In work, we encounter these obstacles, whether it's your ESP, your data that's available to you for targeting for your lists, or design, or you are only allowed to work within templates. Find ways to creatively work within your constraints to, re to achieve your results. So I'm Paul Jackson, I'm from Salt Lake City. I've been in email for about seven years now, which we've been doing on my team, I think with 10 and 13 years. So I got, I got a little lot from these guys. And I work for a company called Lucid. Has anybody heard of Lucid Chart, Lucid yeah. Spark, Lucid Ooh. Scale? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's a lot of companies named Lucid, including a cannabis company. Uh, there's Lucid Motor Companies, which is kind of funny. I had a candidate I was interviewing. He gets on the phone. He says, hey, I love you guys. I've been following your journey for a long time. 
I drive a Tesla, hopefully that doesn't throw you off. Yeah. So let me stop you. We're Lucid Software, not Lucid Motor Company. Yeah. And the rest of the interview went downhill from there. <laughs> it didn't go well. But our product is a SaaS model, so we, we focus on vibration, digital whiteboarding, be able to share with a lot of people and have that always up to date, accessible anywhere software, which is important as I get into this presentation. My team is responsible for all of our long tail emails. And long tail, I don't love the term, if you have a better term, but it's emails that are sent in our minds 30 days after a user signs up to forever, hopefully. <laughs> and the long tail emails are designed to keep people using our product. We also, my team manages all of our transactional emails. We're being a SaaS business, we've got hundreds of transactional emails. I'm gonna focus on the long tail part today. And I wanna start with this test. This test is a win back test, meaning we sent this to users who had used our product at some point in time and are not paying for it any longer. So obviously that's lost revenue. Anybody we can bring back is really valuable. And so the goal was, let's, let's take a coupon and some new features, and let's see if we can incentivize people to come back. So this campaign went out to 100,000 people over these two emails, the initial one and a reminder. How many people do you think actually redeemed that coupon out of the 100,000? And I'm gonna make this awkward, so I'm gonna wait until I get multiple replies. 10,000. 10,000, okay. Two. Oh man, it's quite a spread there. 12. Not 1,200, not 12,000, 12 people. And this came from an idea from my director and some others who said, man, these coupons are so good previous companies we've worked at, e-commerce spaces and others. We had 12 people were doing this. Worse than that, when we went and looked at the data, that those 12 people, we think compared to the control arm, would have redeemed or come back and purchased the product at some point so we should get to a purchase price. So this was a fail, a loss meaning it did not achieve what we wanted to. And I, I don't know if you can tell on the screen up here, but that bottom section is a template slider I built, put hours into it, you could swip, swipe or click through multiple different templates, so you got it. It was beautiful, I loved it, and it didn't drive any engagement at all. So this was a loss. Except, and if you take nothing away from my show until this morning, we learned a ton from this test. I think a failed test is only one that you don't learn Whereas even the test that's a loss, you know, the, the SaaS world and others like Facebook who test, one out of 10 tests wins, the other nine lose. Meaning they're not effective, you don't implement it. So you have to iterate. And we took this test and this loss, this abject failure, and we learned and built a new campaign. So this one just looks totally different. There's no 25% off, there's no bright orange color block. What we did is we focused on use cases and tools. So how can we show users who our laps, this was a, a group of about 1.3 million that we sent to. How do we take that group who's no longer using our product? Maybe they paid, maybe they haven't, it doesn't matter. They're no longer using our product, how do they pursue us? They're really inactive. How do we get them back into the product? Because we know people stop using it because they finished the product they're working on. Or in frequent use, it's not a payment thing. It's a, I didn't get value out of the product. I didn't get further value beyond what I already got. I don't want to keep so how do we expose them to more breadth and depth of the product in order to get them back in? This was a series of four emails, not all of them pictured here, that sent over the course of three weeks. This campaign, way more effective. I mean, I slept way better at night after this campaign went because we focused on how do we give value to our users, and if they see that value, then they'll be willing to pay us. And so this campaign, actually, it's an ongoing campaign, I don't know the exact numbers now, but it drives far more users to use the products and actually pay for it than telling people, hey, we'll put this guy pay Which we would not have ever figured out had we not run that first test and had it lose so terrible. I mean, 12 people on redemptions. We rechecked the data, I don't know how many times. But something like this that was a win and is now still in place this day and is an ongoing campaign. I, we don't need to touch, we better rate on it. It's better than this now, but it was a much more effective campaign and it continues to be kind of the basis of all of our long term emails. So this, was a win. And it was a win not because some brilliant strategy, some great idea. We just took and looked at it and this didn't work and we do something different. Okay, thank you very much.